right. Okay. It's been uh, a little while since we've seen you in the UFC, to say the least. Um, but the good news is that you've got a big fight coming up this Saturday in Anaheim in front of a big crowd. Um, how does it feel to be back in you know the excitement of a UFC fight week, uh, doing the, the press stuff with dummies like me? How good does it feel to be back in the middle of all this? You know, it's great. Um, it, it's been a long time. You know, I, I've spent most of my career since I was 18 fighting nonstop, and it was hard to kind of have to step back and take some time off. But I think in the long run, it was what was best, you know. Um, but to be able to make my, you know, my little comeback on UFC 270 in my hometown, it's, it's perfect. Everything's lining up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It really seems like the stars have aligned for you here. Now, I've got to ask about the layoff. Um, you spoke quite a bit about this in, in an excellent interview with uh, with Mike Heck from MMA Fighting a while back. You know, you revealed that there was an eating disorder. There were some other personal problems outside the cage. Just as a, as a fan and a concerned member of the media, I mean, how are you doing? How are you feeling with everything these days? Um, I'm doing great, you know. Um, that's what this past year was for me, you know, kind of like just taking a step back and healing and um you know, I think just like everyone has their their little, you know, escape in their therapy. And for me, that's what fighting was. Um, and it caused me to push myself in unhealthy ways. Um, and I forced myself to take a step back. Uh, so, I mean, I'm doing great. You know, I've, I've taken a year to kind of regroup and, and recalculate everything. And I'm trying to fix everything that I messed up. And so far, it's great. Um, I feel healthy. I, I It's amazing. I've been walking at like 130 um, for a few weeks now. So I'm finally like leveled out. I feel good. Um, I'm eating, you know, as much as I want. Um, and just, you know, on the mental part to it, it was just a lot to, to kind of go back and fix this last year. But I feel great now. Um, it's easy to talk about, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm just I'm ready to get back in there. I'm excited. Well, I'm certainly excited too as a fan. I, I commend you certainly for doing what you needed to do to, you know, get everything, get your ducks in a row, so to speak. Um, let's talk about the fight itself. Um, you're fighting my fellow Canadian, Jasmine uh, Jazdavicius. I hope I said her name right. I'm still not sure I've got it right. But anyway, uh, great fighter making her UFC debut. Uh, what are your thoughts on her? What do you know about her? Um, I mean, I'm not a big film studier, um, and I've been very open about that. I used to be, but um, you know, where I'm at in my career now, obviously I'm not walking in there blind, you know what I mean? Um, I know what I need to know and everything, uh, along those lines. Um, but I'm excited, you know, uh, I've said this before in interviews, I, every fight is going to be a tough fight in the UFC, you know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to that, you know, I'm looking forward to going and showing, um, you know, there's levels, you know, and I feel like I've definitely, I've jumped a few levels, even though I haven't fought, I don't think people realize how active I've been my whole career. Um, you know, from 18 to 22, I had, uh, you know, I don't even know how many fights, a lot of fights, including boxing fights and match, uh, like grappling matches in between and everything. I've always been nonstop. So for me this past year, it's not like I've been, you know, taking it off and slacking. Like I've been taking it off and and working on myself and improving myself as a person and as an athlete. So, um, I think people are going to see the the next version of me, the grown up version. So I'm excited. Very cool. Uh, you mentioned you're not big on tape study. I've heard you mention that before. I mean, what's the key for, for preparing for a fight for you then if you're not studying tape? I mean, how do you get ready for, for um, specific opponents? You know, honestly, my mentality has always been like, I just want to focus on myself, you know, and I think that's something that I learned early on in my pro career is I would kind of fixate on um, watching footage and expecting opponents to do certain things and I'm going in my opponent would have a different game plan or whatever, it me up, like catch me off guard and you know, I don't like doing that whole thing. Like, especially at the level I'm at, it's like everyone can grapple, everyone can strike. So at some point, it's either going to stay on the feet, it's going to go on the ground, whether I take it there, she takes it there, or none of either one of us take it there. Um, so for me, uh, obviously, like I said, I know what I need to know. You know, I trust my coaches to do a lot of film study, and I trust my coaches as far as, um, you know, helping me game plan. But at the end of the day, like, my style is my style. You know what I mean? And I feel like to be the best in the world, like, you should be able to, everyone should be able to know your style and it doesn't matter. They still can't stop you, you know? So mm-hmm. um, my goals are definitely long-term and obviously it's one step at a time, but in order to get to that long-term, I try to keep that mindset of, it's just focusing on myself. Like my set, my skill set should be able to beat anyone's skill set if I 100% believe in it. Was this, you know, revelation that the tape study isn't, ca- isn't productive for you? Was that, a, you know, was that something you, you figured out on your own? Was that a breakthrough you had on yeah. your own or, you know? Yeah, I mean, for me, so fighting has always been, ever since I was 16, I've been engulfed in it, you know, every single day I'm on the mats, um, you know, there's no in camp, out of camp, it's the same shit for me, um, mm-hmm. and for me, uh, I just noticed that I would literally go home after training every day, all day, and I'd watch footage in bed before I go to sleep, 
You know what I mean? And then I'm, and it's like, to me, it's just like, like I said, especially at the level I am now, everyone can do everything. You know what I mean? Or they should be able to do everything. Um, so for me, it's like, of course, you know, the, like, as a fighter, you know, who's around you, you know what I mean? You know, who's in your division, you know, who's up and coming. So you have a general idea of everyone. Um, but at the same time, it's like, I'm expecting the best version of her. Just like I'm the best version of myself right now. You know what I mean? Um, and I think if you think anything less or more of that, I think you, you're setting yourself up for, for disaster, you know? So, um, mm -hmm. for me, I'm just trying to focus on myself and, and the improvements I've made. And I think they'll show through. Um, I don't think, uh, film tape is necessary. I mean, if that's your thing, that's your thing, but it's just personally not mine. Mm -hmm. Different strokes for different folks. I totally yeah. get that. Um, you know, assuming things go your way this Saturday, you know, where do you sort of expect to land in the division with a win over, over Jasmine, who's of course making her debut? You know, I don't, I'm not sure yet, you know, um, you know, like I said, I'm walking 130 pounds right now. So the possibility, and I'm not dieting down or anything. Like, obviously I eat healthy year round. Um, but you know, I might go back to 15. I might stay at 25. I think that's going to be something that we have to wait and see, you know, how my body responds after this fight, how I feel in this fight. Um, if I stay at 125, I'll definitely be a smaller 25. And that doesn't necessarily bother me because I've fought at 125 before and it's not a problem, but, um, you know what I mean? I think that's going to be something I'll have to think about after this fight recovery wise and, and everything. Is it possible? We'll just sort of see you drifting back and forth between the two divisions. Probably, for your whole career? You know, I'm 22 years old. Um, and I have fought majority at straw weight, but I've had a few fights at 125. I've grappled a lot at 125. I've done boxing matches a lot at 125. Um, so 125 is nothing new to me. Um, and I like fighting both divisions. They're just a little different. You know what I mean? Um, so I would love to be successful in both divisions. You know what I mean? Uh, but I would prefer to not flip flop. You know what I mean? Every so often I'd rather stick with one division, uh, get my way to the top there and then think about another division. Um, if I'm like in my head, it what sounds right is staying at 115 and then going to 125 as I get older. But, um, something I've learned from the sport is it's all up to my body, you know, and I'm finally mm -hmm. starting to listen to my body. So we'll see what it says after this fight. Mm -hmm, definitely. Um, well, you know, assuming you feel good this Saturday, things yeah. go your way. I, I assume the the end goal for you is Valentina Shevchenko, the champion. Um, she's looked, you know, pretty much unbeatable at flyweight. She doesn't really seem willing to, to share this belt with anybody. Um, have you noticed anything about her that you feel like you might be able to expose at some point? Like, how, do, how do you beat a champion like her? You know, everyone's beatable. And I know she's, the thing is, she's one of the most technical fighters, you know, in the division, or you could even say in women's MMA in general, but that doesn't mean she doesn't have flaws. You know what I mean? Um, I think people go into a fight with her already defeated, you know, and I feel like it's a mindset thing. Obviously, you need a certain skill set to beat her, but I also think it's a mindset thing. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Kind of like how when, when everyone fought Ronda, like, everyone's going in like, oh, there's no way she's going to beat her. You know what I mean? I feel like we're kind of at that point with Valentina where it's like everyone that fights her, they're just like, oh, they're just throwing another girl in with her. Like, you know what I mean? But I mean, she's definitely beatable. You know what I mean? You need the right skill set, but you also need the right mindset. So I think um, trying to like have both of those is definitely the key to beating Valentina. Now, I know obviously you're not big on tape study, but when you're watching yeah. her fights, for example, like yeah. I assume you're you're seeing things, right? Like, oh, I can I can capitalize on that. You notice things when you watch a champion like her, you know, areas that you can capitalize I on? I have best to notice things when I watch everyone, you know what I mean? Whether I have an opportunity to fight them or they're below me, they're over me. I'm, I'm a fight fan, but I'm also like, I love the sport, so I like picking things apart. So of course I notice things. Uh, I'm not going to elaborate, uh, but I do notice things. Of course, I, I try my best to pick things apart. Like I said, she's definitely one of the most technical, if not the most technical. So um, her execution is great, but everyone, everyone's beautiful. Um, you mentioned that you're a fan of this sport. I know you try to tune in for, for all the big fights. Uh, yeah. Given that, you know, I, I figured I'd ask you about Misha Tate, obviously former bantamweight yeah. champion who's coming down now to the division you're fighting in. Mm -hmm. um, just as a fan, you know, what, what do you, how do you think this move will go for her? Um, you know, I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, I don't know her personally, so I can't like, you know what I mean? I can't say like, oh, 135 will be better. 125 will be better. Um, from the outside looking in, I think we'll see. You know what I mean? Um, she has had most or all her career at 135. Um, and I mean, I've, I've never even really seen her in person. So size wise, I couldn't even tell you. Um, but I think we're just gonna have to wait and see. We're gonna see how the cut goes, how the fight goes. Um, I think if that cut is good, I think she'll have a lot of success uh, in the division, especially being primarily a grappler um, coming down from 135. You know what I mean? Um, but at the end of the day, you never know. Uh, 25 could not work out for her or, you know, it could be her, her home division. So, um, I mean, it's kind of cool to see her come down and, and test the waters uh, for sure. So we'll have to wait and see. Mm -hmm.
Mm -hmm. Um, you're obviously very young in this sport and, you know, she's been around the block. She's been doing this for a long time. I I assume you sort of, you know, grew up watching her. Does it excite you at all thinking about potentially fighting someone who's accomplished what she has in this sport? Um, you know, I I think it's kind of cool because, uh, so I'm definitely one of the like Ronda revolution girls, you know what I mean? Uh, I started training at 16 and I remember the fight that got me into it was Beshkoheya versus Ronda Rousey. Um, and that wasn't even that long ago, you know what I mean? And now I'm mm-hmm. fighting in the same organization at the same, you know, obviously there's levels she's higher up in the organization than I am, but we're fighting in the same organization at the same level, you know, to, so potentially to think I'm a few fights away from possibly fighting her. It's, it's just cool. You know, it, it, uh, kind of shows to my hard work. It kind of shows to myself, like, you know, you put your hair down and work and you can get anywhere in any amount of time. Mm-hmm. This might be a tough question for you to answer, uh, you know, just given that you are a strawweight and a flyweight, but yeah. those two divisions are both phenomenal right now. Just so much talent. You've got prospects, you've got veterans, champions, you know, you name it. Which yeah. division is better right now? I don't know. I think that's hard. I think there are a lot more girls at 115, obviously, so the volume ends up. Um, but I, like I said, like I have fought in both divisions and they just both hold different you know, I mean, they have different challenges. I feel like at 115, um, there's more stamina, there's more speed, you know what I mean? But at 125, there's more power and there's a little more grit, I've noticed. So um, I think it, it all depends. Obviously, there's less, uh, like, contenders in the 125, uh, but it doesn't mean they're not tough fights, you know what I mean? And, and of course, look at Valentina. Like, y- people can say, oh, yeah, you get two fights and you get Valentina, but it's like, yeah, you got to fight Valentina still. It's not like fucking a walk mm-hmm. in the park, you know what I mean? Um, so for me, I, I think both divisions have, you know, their different specialties. I think 115 has one is a division that has a lot of really amazing prospects that people don't really look at. You know what I mean? Like, uh, mm-hmm. now they're starting to notice them, but like, say like me, Corey McKenna, Cheyenne Blissmith, like all the girls at the bottom are tough as hell. You know what I mean? And there's so many veterans at 125 that are still in the top mix, but all of us at the bottom, we're like this new generation, like chomping at the bit you know what I mean like we're putting each other through hell to try to get to the top so um I feel like 115 is definitely more of like a barn burner like it's some more of like who can get like grittier you know what I mean because we're all tough as hell so um and we're all just trying to fight to the top so I think it just depends on how you look at the division right I was gonna ask you about something you just mentioned you know there's this influx of really exciting young talent actually in both weight classes do you sort of feel like we're about to see a changing of the guard in, in these two weight classes? Yeah, I mean, I do. And I think it's exciting. And I've seen it coming. You know, even when I fought for Invicta, uh, there was a large group of girls that I was like, okay, well, all of us are for sure going to be in the UFC at one point. And it's going to be crazy because, um, you know, I, I think we're finally at the point to where girls that have been training since they were, you know, they started training because they wanted to be a champion. They've had the drive of being a UFC champion since they started training or like since they were super young, you know what I mean? Um, so I don't know. I think it's, I think it's cool. You know, I think it's cool. It's definitely a different type of like drive, you know what I mean? Especially up and coming and like being the younger athlete who is like trying to tear up the scene. Um, and there's a bunch of us. So it's like, who can be the better athlete? You know what I mean? Uh, so it's really cool. It takes competition to a whole new level. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, absolutely very well said um let me ask you one more question before i let you get back to all the excitement over there um assuming things go your way this saturday you know after everything you've been through over the last couple of years and further back i take it to to get a win in front of your hometown crowd with fans in attendance i mean what is that moment going to feel like for you it's got to be crazy i imagine yeah you know it's it's gonna be insane um I was supposed to fight last weekend, you know, and then I had the fight moved and, and I might have got myself in trouble even uh, for, for doing that. But it's for sure going to be worth it. You know, every every athlete dreams of being able to fight for the UFC in front of their home crowd. You know what I mean? Um, so for me, it's just it's super dope. I'm super excited. Um, you know, it's going to be like a surreal moment and I'm going to try my best to take it all in, but it's hard to. 